We are live on the campus of Florida A&M University for MEAC Basketball on ESPN+. And welcome everybody inside the Al Lawson Center where tonight the Rattlers of Florida A&M will host the Eagles of North Carolina Central. Charles Ward alongside FAMU women's head coach Shalon Pillow with the play call. Glad you could join us for our coverage. And coach, if we had to pin a theme for tonight's ball game, it would be which team finds its rhythm, rhythm first. There's so much uncertainty going on right now with COVID, so it's really hard to catch the rhythm. Talk about rhythm. There are going to be two players we'll keep an eye on tonight. C.J. Kaiser for the Eagles of North Carolina Central. A lot of rhythm coming from him. He is an offensive machine. He's 52% from the field, 40% from the three, and 71% from the free throw. Now, Coach has really challenged him to pick up his game rebounding and his defensive game as well. Now, on the other side, we have M.J. Randolph. 16 points, seven rebounds, but he does so much more. He leads the team in assists and steals as well, just to name a few things. He's a downhill player, mid-range, and really looking to get to the line. Rattlers at two and eight overall and one and two in conference play. The central coaches staff led by one of the best in the MEAC, and that's Lavelle Moat doing a tremendous job with the Eagles of North Carolina Central. Yeah, he has an amazing record here at, at Central, and also look at his playing career. I mean, that is stands up to his coaching career as well. Eagles at four and three and undefeated in conference play at this point at two and oh on the moat. And, and uh, they have a lot of momentum coming in to the night's ball game against the Rattlers of Florida and m Absolutely. And again, like we spoke before, it's all about the rhythm and to see who's really going to come in and, and get rolling and get in sync first. So that's going to be interesting to see how we start off the game. On the other side of the court, Opposing Coach Moten is Robert, Robert McCollum for the Raptors of Florida a &M. Yeah, Coach McCollum's in his fourth season at AM. He's got a 35 and 67 record, and he he's been in the game for a long time. This ball game really an interesting set was scheduled to be played in Durham, but here in Tallahassee instead is simply because of COVID. Right, that's what we're talking about. I, I feel like we're going to be talking about COVID a whole lot. It's on the front of everybody's mind. It's the elephant in the room. It's constantly coming up because it's constantly changing things. This is really hard when you wake up in the morning that you're playing somewhere and then you go to bed thinking something else. So it's always constantly changing. Really some outstanding comments from Coach Moten about COVID and how it's impacted this program. He actually indicated that they only really have had eight or nine days of practice since this whole thing began. Which is unbelievable. To get any type of continuity in the offense, especially the type of offenses that they're running, and only have eight practices, it's amazing that they've been in so many tight ball games and able to compete. For the Rattlers of Florida A&M, same thing with them as well. They have to had their issues with COVID as well as in addition to some injuries of, of players. Right, and I think the, the COVID and the uncertainty it goes hand in hand with the injuries. When you can't get a constant there, you're off 10 days and you're coming back in, you're gonna be injury prone. These teams, no strangers to each other. This was gonna be their 18th meeting here tonight. Yeah, and oh. it looks like Central has the upper hand on that. Now the last time, um, FAMU came away with the win, so let's see what happens tonight. That's interesting you bring that up because FAMU on that nine-game winning streak here inside the Al Lawson Center, the last victim of a year ago, were these same Eagles of North Carolina Central. Right, I'm expecting a, an amazing matchup today, Charles. It's going to be a fun game to watch. Players making it onto the floor, getting set to get this one started here inside the Al Lawson Center. Going to be the Red Shirt Junior, Justin Watley, jumping for the Eagles in North Carolina Central. They are in the white, and the Rattlers of Florida A&M will send DJ Jones to the mid strike to, to jump it for them. I think it's going to be really important for the Rattlers to defend their home court this evening. you got to win at home, especially in the conference. Tap's going to be controlled. We're underway as the Rattlers will have first crack at it. This is Cameron Reeves, the senior, pushing out front now. That's Moraine. Now they work the block. Spear in the corner. Good look down there in the corner by Jones. Jones got the space and knocked down the triple for the Rattlers. Looks like Jones is on beat, making that shot early in the game. Only going to give him two on that basket, though, so FAMU with the first two of the contest. This is Moulton up top. Over to Jordan Perkins, the senior. Palmer handles for his first 
touch of the basketball. Six to shoot. Inside they go to Wetley. Nicely done by the Eagles that trip down the floor. He has been doing an amazing job inside for them. He's only played five games this season, and he's doing a great job inside. Wetley known more for his rebounding at 6.3 per ball game. He leads the team, averaging 11 points for them as well. Aaron shot by the Rattlers, quickly back the other way, the Eagles. Yeah, you've got to finish that easy shot inside. Those are freebies. Eagles turn it over. Rattlers have numbers back the other way to the rack. It's Randolph, but shots off the mark. Off of his leg, over to the Eagles. Yeah, unforced turnovers can really make a difference in a game like that, especially early. I know we're early into the game, but we really got to take care of the ball. Every possession counts. Randolph coming off a 20-point performance against South Carolina State, his second double-double of the year. Coughed it up there. Just it away here at the Lawson Center. Shot in the corners off the mark by Central. Reeves clears for FAMU. Tied at two. Reeves outside for three. Good luck. It won't fall. I bet Coach McCollum probably isn't happy with that shot that early into the offense. FAMU likes to run a, a continuity type of offense to get the ball moving. So a shot that early into the shot clock is probably not what, we're, what they're looking for. It's just Spear pushing back out now. Reeves handles. This time out front is Spear. Got space and Spear is on target with the triple for FAMU. Now that type of shot right there gets you out of the zone pretty quickly. Spear with 13 points in the ball game against South Carolina State a few days ago. Back the other way for Triple. This one hits the front of the iron. Shot taken there by Moultrie, the red shirt junior. They're going to uh, FAMU is doing an outstanding job on the on the boards early. They're limiting Central's second chance shots. That's going to be big for them. Randolph works it right side to the rack, but good defensive recovery there by the Eagles. Ball swatted out of bounds by Palmer catching up with the play. Now look at FAMU here. They get a nice little handoff, good ball movement, and that's more of the shot that Coach McCollum was looking for. With a couple more touches and a great three to finish it off. The Rattlers off to a 5-2 lead with the basketball. Spear looking again to the rack. Shots off the mark in the corner. Perkins in deep. You cannot let them get that deep in transition. You really got to stop the ball early. At the block. This is what leads to the rack. Shot rejected inside. Jones able to block that away for the Rattlers. Watley really has to explode on that. He has the height advantage in that. There's no way he should get blocked on the hook shot right there. Reeves up top. That's Coach McCullum in the background. You may hear him there. He's trying to get the troops in line and get them where they're supposed to be. Randolph with a quick step right side. Euro step to the rack. Got the shot to fall with a count it. there. Uh, <laughs> they go the other way. So it was a matchup we pre previewed in the pregame. Kaiser staying put defensively and took the charge. Yeah. Charges like this, that are, are huge momentum changers and swingers right there. That could have went any way for either team there. But you see there, he was set, took the charge, and the ball goes to Central. Central trailing by three. Palmer squares. Perkins, the senior from Greensboro, moves left side and he drew the foul. Yeah, Central looks like their game plan is really to attack them on defense. They're trying to get to the rack. They're a really good spot up shooting team, but there's an open gap. They're going to attack and try to get the easy layup. Spear trying to catch up on that play for the Rattlers, not able to get there soon enough. Right of the cylinder for the Eagles to inbound it. Charles, we had an opportunity to watch their shoot around today. They have some really nice underneath out of bounds plays. I'm really interested to see what they run here. They dump it to Wetley. Moultrie looks to space. 
Moultrie with the jumper, foul line extended, and knocks it down for the Eagles. He's a big part of their offense and more of a, a leader on the team and gets them going. I know we, they, we talk a lot about uh, CJ, but he's a big part of their, their winning too. He had 15 in the last ball game, led him in scoring against in that last contest against South Carolina State. Floater by Randolph in the paint is off the mark. Got a good look. Wouldn't stay. Down at the corner, rattling the three shots off by Moultrie. Another big rebound for FAMU there to get them going into their offense transition. At the block, down low, got some space. Right. Easy lay in by Moraine for the Rattlers. That's definitely what Coach McCollum is looking for. You got to hit those easy layups. So now that we've gotten into the game a little bit, looks like there's a little bit of rhythm, like we talked about before, and able to make those easy shots. That's what Randolph was talking to us about early on, is that they have to be patient. They were very patient that trip down the floor. Patience definitely is a virtue for this team to be successful. What the left side, good defensive work by Jones with another block. Basketball tapped out of bounds by the Eagles of North Carolina Central. It'll stay with the Rattlers on their end of the floor. They lead it 7-4. Back with more MEAC basketball after this break. Oh, Mom. You're the cool mom. <laughs> more fun? More fun. We are back live inside the Lawson Center. Rattlers with a 7-4 lead over the Eagles of North Carolina Central. FAMU with the basketball when play resumes. Randolph set to get us going. Rattlers final season in the MEAC for them. Already with four MEAC championships, they'd like to leave this conference with a fifth if they could win it this year. Absolutely. So Randolph right there just went downhill like we talked about before. That's his bread and butter and how he really gets after it. Now he going to the line to get two free shots. Mentioned at the top of the broadcast as well that the Rattlers in this facility in Tallahassee going back to last year, 9-0 and oh and, and play here inside the Lawson Center. So they love this court. It's all about protecting your home court for sure. On the weave up top. Reeves is fouled, and that's Mike Melvin, the senior from Fayetteville, North Carolina, trying to catch up with that play, and he gets his first foul of the ball game. The last thing Central wants to do is get in foul trouble and put FAMU on the line early, especially this early into the, into the half. So shot clock at 16 after the inbound play for FAMU. Randolph up top. Guarded by Kaiser. One-on-one -on -one floater inside the paint by Randolph. Kaiser clears for Central. Melvin, Kaiser, got a look. Missed it badly. Basketball over to the Rattlers. Yeah, again, early shots in the offense. Both of these teams are continuity teams with a lot of options. So any shot early in the offense is not the shot either one of these coaches want. Kaiser at this point scoreless in the ball game. Got the sense there he rushed out and just trying to get into that scoring column. Absolutely. When you're in the position, Kaiser, then you have to let the game come to you. You can't rush it. Again, we talk about it over again. I hope we don't sound redundant, but it's about the rhythm, letting the rhythm of the game come to you. That shot in the corner by Reeves. Off rhythm, but they get another look after the rebound. Jumper from out front. This one by Spear won't fall. But there's a backside put back. Nicely done there by that, Bryce Moraine. That was a bad shot to begin with, but they kept on the boards, kept fighting on the boards. Two offensive rebounds and ended up with points on the board. So Moraine with this first two of the ball game. The Rattlers extend their lead to 9-4. They stay in man-to-man. -man. Wetley handles left side. Gives it over to Jonathan Maxwell, who just got out on the floor for Coach Roten and the Eagles. Shot clock at three now. Kaiser realizes, kicks it off of his foot. Basketball over to the Raptors of Fan Ewing. Great defensive stop there. Last time on, the, on the Central Fan U, started out with a bad shot. But like I said before, they got it. Another miss and another rebound. Battle, battle. The toughest man on the court is all about rebounding. You're going to be the best rebounder if you're the toughest person out there. 
Three times the charm there for the Rattlers as they got that basket for Moraine. Out on the floor now for the Rattlers. Jai Clark, the junior from Orlando, Florida. They go to him often for three-point opportunities. Floater inside the paint by Spear. Doesn't connect. Central with the basketball. That's a tough play right there. You don't want to compound mistakes. You know, he had a bad shot there, a bad floater. The best thing you could do is get back and get a defensive stop, not commit a foul and give him more time another possession. A couple of substitutions on the floor for the Eagles as well. Justin Wright, the freshman out there. As Moultrie handles left side, they left him alone, didn't take advantage of the three-point space, tried to work it down low to Maxwell and a whistle. That's a really nice hustle play, but you have to be smart. You got to pick your times, especially when you play as many minutes as he does. You can't afford to get early fouls like that. Devin Palmer back out on the floor. He'll replace Melvin in the lineup. Short spot of duty there for Mike Melvin as he goes back to the sideline. The correction is Keith Littles there coming out on the floor for the Rattlers at Florida a and in the corner for three. That one hoisted by Moultrie, but off the mark. Randolph clears. He wants to push it. Oftentimes, when you take a quick three or you sh a shoot and a three-point shot like that, it's going to be a long rebound, which gets the other op the other team the opportunity to push the ball in transition. Bam, you're trying to work it down in the corner. Shot on the mark. Nicely done there by Clark. He got out on the floor, found the space, and knocked it down for the Rattlers. That was a big shot. That's a great way to turn Central's mistake into two points, three points for you. Rattler lead now 12-4, their largest of this first half of play. Whistles and a travel violation there against the Eagles. Yeah, it looked like a moving screen there. Let's. Oh. <laughs> uh, 12-14, 12-4 lead for the Rattlers of FAMU over the Eagles of North Carolina Central. Good basketball action. More ahead on ESPN+. Plus. We do it all so you don't have to. That's how we deliver confidence. Penske. Athens leading at 12-4. Coach Pillow, when we talked to Coach Moten before the ball game, we thought he was kind of pulling on a leg, talking about the, the rhythm factor for the Eagles of North Carolina Central. But right now, they're kind of dysfunctional out on the floor. Yeah, uh, Central's playing some really sloppy basketball right now. They're going to have to clean it up and get a little more sharp if they want to close this gap that they have right now. They had four COVID shutdowns in their program, being out 52 days with COVID. And uh, it's just wreaked havoc on them at this point in the season. But they are trying to rebound and get things together as Randolph misses inside the paint. Interesting quote he referenced while we were talking about it. said, you can do all the Zoom calls you want and all the online teaching you want. But with basketball, if you want to get better at basketball, you got to play basketball. Absolutely. It's, it's really hard to pick up the timing and the feel for your teammates on watching film. Film is a great tool. It's an amazing tool. But you have to have both. you got to play and you have to study the game. Whatley trying to get him on the rhythm from outside, but he misses on the triple. I feel like Central is forcing a lot of shots right now. These are not the shots that they normally get. But again, with the lack of playing, it, it is two for 12 from the field right now, for Central right now. Yeah. 0 for 6 from behind the arc. And you know, they are really strong in spot shooting. That is their that is their bread and butter, and that's where they're most successful is shooting. Yeah, average over 42% shooting from behind the arc, but right now I have not found a rhythm here at the Lawson Center. Spinning inside is Randolph. No whistle, but he got it. Uh, now they'll get a call inside. Didn't hear the whistle, but it looks like Randolph will be going to the line for FAMU. They are beating him up inside. Every time he attacks the rim, he's getting to the free throw line. Now, what I would like to see is Randolph to get some man one plays. Get in there, be on balance, and finish and get a three-point play. He'll be shooting here. On the season from the line, Randolph at just 59%, 33 of 56 coming into today's ball game. You know, you certainly would like to see him north of that. Absolutely, absolutely. And FAMU as a team not doing very well from the line as well. 
just that 64% shooting. Right. Most coaches want you a, a, above 70% for sure. 80% um, is awesome. <laughs> that would be really good. But 70 is kind of kind of par. Randolph converts one from the line, make it 13-4. Rattlers with the lead. About halfway of this first half of basketball here from the Lawson Center. Nice dish underneath, but too deep under the cylinder to get the shot up, but the fight rebound on the back side. And that's Cameron Bowles, the redshirt junior, with his first basket of the ball game. That was a great pass, and they stuck with it. You have to be very patient, like we talked before, and stick with it and get the second place, especially when you're trying to get on into your game. Inside they go. That's the sheer Evan, Evans to sheer got some space inside. He just got out on the floor for Coach McCollum and pays dividends already. Absolutely. You, you really, uh, I, I get excited when I see big men out there on the court. You know, I'm a post player, and I just get excited to see by somebody big light on their feet and go to work inside. Sheer, sophomore at 6'8", 300. Back the other way now, behind the arc. Again for three, Clark can't put it down this time. And Central comes away with the basketball. Left side behind the arc, Palmer has some space. They are just stone cold from behind the arc. Eagles are. You know when you get with three-point shooting teams, they say it all the time, you live by the three, you die by the three. And if you're going to miss threes, you got to crash the boards. you got to get some second-chance opportunities. They're getting one shot, and they're out. That shot behind the arc by Johnny Brown, the sophomore is off the mark, but Nashir coming our way, trying to chase down that Aaron ball as it goes out of bounds. So you'll see here that Central came. They went in the zone, attack, good ball movement inside finish and then look the big man hustle back you gotta love that you gotta love it this year go to prince haiti got his first two of the ball game good work inside we talked about this before he hits for his size has such nimble feet and able to move very well up and down the floor particularly that, inside the paint that to me is a true athlete to have that much weight and size and to be able to move so gracefully and light that that is that is fun to watch Alex Caldwell, the junior, just got activated by the Eagles out on the floor now. Works it left side in traffic. Palmer is going to draw a foul. He'll be going to the line. So Palmer, the senior from Hyde Park, Massachusetts. Central's really trying to get something going there. Nice shot fake, attack, drawing the foul. Now we got to knock down these two free throws, get some points on the board, and then get a stop on the oh, other end. 8.36 left in this first half of play. Palmer from the line, only 43% for the Eagles. Remmer falls off on the first. Randolph set to come back in for Coach McCullum and FAMU. He replaces Clark in the lineup. So Palmer for the second of two. Last ball game they had against South Carolina State. They trailed by 17 in that ball game. Able to call their way back in for that win, 64-63. That's a sign of a, a veteran team. You know, Central is a veteran team. Although they have had little practice, them just kind of knowing what is expected, you know, has had them some success. Even though it might not end up in a win, they've been in some really good games. Jones had success in the corner of that trip for the Raptors as he knocked down a jumper there, make it 17-7 after his basket. Now FAMU jumping into a zone. Right side with some space. That's Caldwell, who just got out on the floor, just got activated for his first two of the contest. And he came in ready to go. That is great when you come off an injury or if you haven't played for a while, to come in and hit that first shot, that can really get you going. You could see that sigh of relief on the face of C.J. Kaiser when we were talking to him in pregame about the fact that Caldwell was going to be able to play today. And you can see why. Absolutely. What I liked a lot about C.J. when we spoke to him, he involved all of his teammates. He gave them all props, said he couldn't do it without them. And that's the sign of a good player. You know you can't pass the ball to yourself. You can't bring the ball. You can't do it all. And he gave his teammates all the props. 
Russell on that play, going to go against the Eagles of North Carolina Central. Meanwhile, on the previous trip down the floor, Jones, two for two from the, about the same spot. Yeah, you really get in there, good shot fake, get out there, knock it down. <laughs> but I do want the fastest 5G network. Oh, I want the fastest 5G network. Are we actually doing this again? It's not complicated. Only AT&T gives... trying to make something something happen underneath, but he goes back outside instead, and Bryce Moraine is there for the jumper left side. That's the way to come out of timeout and execute. That's so important when you have that timeout that you come out and you get something out of it. They got deep in the paint to draw the defense. Moraine able to answer with the jumper. Rattlers with their largest lead of the ball game, 21-9 over the Eagles. All out extended with the jumper, that's Bowles. He can't convert. It'll belong to the Rattlers of FAMU. Everything bouncing FAMU's way right now, Coach. It absolutely is. I mean, Central made a great effort for the boards. They just got an uh, unfortunate bounce, and FAMU gets it back. So they just got to stick with it and, and let the game come to them. There's a lot of basketball to be played still. Wetley back out on the floor. He will replace Bowles in the Eagles lineup. Reeves, the senior from Champaign, Illinois, handles out front over to Jones. That same spot, this time Jones a bit short on it. They were determined to go there, though, to see what would happen third time down. Yeah, you go to the well runs dry. <laughs> no, they hadn't stopped him. He hit two in a row. I would give it to him again. He checked. <laughs> <Sure. laughs> Check it out. Kaiser to the rack, wildly on that shot. Two Rattlers converge, and they take it out of bounds, so it'll stay with the Eagles. Randolph down at the block, and Jones. They both got tied up with the ball between them. You know, you can um, never see on the stat sheet hustle plays. You know, that's something that, that FAMU has been doing. Some of the players that hasn't showed up on the stat sheet, but they got to keep on hustling and, and getting those 50-50 balls. Out front. Caldwell down at the block on the spin. Nice turn inside by Maxwell, but he comes away empty. Yeah, another one and done for Central. They really have to get on the boards and get some second chance opportunities. Reeves out front. Shot clock working its way toward 10 now. Foul on extended with a whistle. That's inside the paint. <laughs> you can see Coach Lavelle right there. He cannot be happy what he's sitting right now. And when we spoke to him during shoot around, he says the best that he can do is just put an asterisk by it and then ask his players to give their best effort every time. But right now, he does not look like a happy camper at all. As Randolph misses the first, other thing he said in our comment con conversation with him early on was that, you know, I've been everything but a basketball coach at this point since so many things have been going on with that program that it's just been hard to focus in on what the really job really entails or the there, primary part of it. There are so many things. This, as a head coach, sometimes it feels like 10% of what you're doing is actually X's and O's and basketball stuff. You are a counselor, you are a parent, you are everything to a lot of these kids. And especially with COVID, it just adds another layer onto it. So I definitely understand where Coach is coming from on that. Good tie up down low, leads to a jump ball and it'll belong to the Eagles of North Carolina Central. Whatley at 68240 from Chesapeake, Virginia. With a rugged hand on that basketball, tie it up, they'll keep it as a result. Caldwell back totals near the midstorm. Trying to reset that offense. Which Oak City wanted to turn this into a five-on-five ball game, meaning limit the transition baskets for FAMU, but the Eagles turn it over there. Quickly the other way. At the block, nicely done on the run, but the ball will not stay in for Marine and the Rattlers. Good transition, no result. Whistle there, continuation by Caldwell, and he'll be at the line. 
did a great job on defensive end. Got Central to make a turnover, and then they don't convert on the other end. That's almost like you put all that effort in and no rewards. You have to make that easy layup. That's a beautifully ran fast break. You just got to finish at the end. Palmer back out on the floor for the Eagles. And Randolph reports back for McCullum and the Rattlers. 5.06 left first half. It's been all Rattlers at this point. 21-9 they lead it. Caldwell has been a spark for the Eagles though since he's come into the ball game. He definitely has and right now they need a spark for wherever they can get it. You know, they need someone to get this team rolling and get them some points here on the board. Missed on that offering from out front. Reeves works it right side for Pam Mule. Now to Keith Littles. Littles just out there. He's a junior from Augusta, Georgia. On a weave. And a little legal screen there going to be set by Moraine. So we go back the other way. This play is like that. That you are just trying to get something going. We're getting close to the end. We're getting close to the end of the, of the half. You need to finish out strong. Looks like there was a little hip check there. And now Central has the ball. Now let's see if they convert that turnover into some points and some momentum to finish out this half. Caldwell, the junior from Columbia, South Carolina. On the weave, Kaiser. Now Kaiser pushes left side underneath with the pass across the floor. Nicely done to Maxwell. He's found some space inside and a basket. I don't think he was ready for that pass all. He looked a little startled, but it's still two points. So we're going to take it, and we're going to run. Sure, I'll never tell. That's for sure. <laughs> Good footwork. Get a basket after a long silence as an air ball in the corner. Now they got a run out to Caldwell. Two on two basketball. Caldwell to the right. And there's the one. And the flush and finish for the Eagles. Now that, if that doesn't get you going, I don't know what will. A steal and to finish it with a dunk. Now that's how you get the momentum going. Maxwell following the well, knocked it down. Time out on the floor, 344. Rattlers with a 21-13 lead and with authority. Watch Maxwell lay it in. That follow and a slam. He looked like he was a WWE wrestler right there, the way he flushed that. That was amazing. 47. We've been your local hometown team. You know the next play. Get in the game and click on careers at grandfurniture.com. 21 13, fam, you with the lead for the Eagles of North Carolina Central. This first half of basketball really has been the tail of two halves. In their last ball game, they're already at 31 points at this point. Right now, they only have 13. But the good news is they are on a 4 0 run and things are starting to look up. Yeah, it looks like they're turning around. That last play, that dunk, if that doesn't get you going, if that doesn't get you excited, I mean, I don't know what will. But that's what we talked about, just closing out the half strong. We got three and a half minutes to execute strongly and then have the momentum going to the second half. Missed on an opportunity there, but they come away with a rebound after an errant shot by the Rappers inside the paint. Kaiser wants to hurry, works it right side, floater, he drew the foul. Jones was catching up, but too late as Kaiser got it to the cylinder. They could definitely see the tide change a little bit here. You know, you have a great finish on Central's end and then followed up and another easy layup missed on FAMU's end. So Kaiser to shoot, just finishing up on that tail of two halves. They are only at 24% shooting from the floor in this half of basketball inside the Lawson Center. So they're still trying to find that formula to get that rhythm back. So he'll shoot two here. First on the first. Sometimes all it takes is just to get the see the ball going to the basket, whether it's a free throw or whatever, just to get you going and get that positive mental image in your head to see the ball going to the hoop. The junior Nahimi Kabe out on the floor now as Kaiser missed on the second of two. Kabe on the 6'9 junior from the Democrat Republic of Congo out on the floor. Seven point spread for the Rattlers. They have the basketball. Randolph left block. Now down to Deshear. Down in the corner. Free for three. Jumper by Clark. He nails it. Big, big shot. That's exactly what they needed. That shot was right on time. 
That was coming from the bench designed by Coach McCullum. They wanted to get it to him in the corner. They did, and he knocked it down. Up top trying to answer. It's Palmer, but his three-point shot is off the mark. Eagles not, not converted from behind the arc at all and 0 for 9 in this first half of play as Bashir misses top of the cylinder for FAMU. Kaiser, right side challenges, nicely done by Kaiser. That's a strong, strong move. You go on against 300 pounds there and you finish the play. That is big time. Just held it in the air just as much as he could to get him coming down and he was still going up. Got the basket. Reeves, Clark again for three. This one's off the mark. Bashir, backside rebound. That's the put back for Pam Hill. There you go. Good positioning by Bashir results in that backside basket. Lead is 10 for Pam now. Under two left first half. Caldwell behind the arc. Kaiser a free for three. Rimmer is off the mark. Rebound, cleared, another look for the Eagles. Kaiser once again, good ball fake. Now draws the defense and a whistle. Let's take a look at Kaiser's last possession here. Put the ball on the floor, went in there against a wall of a man and was able to finish. That little hang time there, he, um, Number 22 could not stay out there with him. Nice touch, great finish. Trying to get himself on track, trying to just will it here before this first half ends. He's back at the line for the Eagles shooting here. I know he's looking forward to halftime there, Charles. Looks like he's hanging on his shorts a little bit. He's been playing hard. He's just got to finish these free throws here. Kaiser got the shooter's roll on the first. All things being said, you get the sense that Coach Milton would be happy if they went into this half at least on the only single digits down. Because they've had a difficult time in this first 20 minutes. Yeah, it shows a lot of character for the central team to be down on the road and then to fight back and to go into single digits. I would think that would be a, a win for them. Clark surveys for FAMU. Zone defense for the Eagles. With a minute 19 left. And now close to 10 to shoot. Randolph, floater in the paint. They left him alone. He can't finish. Fought for it, though. Tapped it. Couldn't get the second to fall. Central is really struggling on the boards. That's kind of been their story, though, throughout the season. They've been out-rebounded out by around 9 or 10 rebounds a game. Caldwell. Ill-advised shot there. Just was not set for this good, solid look. You have to be more sharp than ever, especially coming down to the end of a half and get a good shot. Coach McCullum, you can hear him yelling in the background that he wants a timeout. See if he got it. Looks like he did get the timeout. He wanted to really get them onto the sideline to talk about how to run this first half out. They'll still have time left on the clock, but the idea is to run out off as much of that shot clock as you can to leave as little time as possible for the Eagles back the other way. And when they leave that little bit of time, they have to make sure they execute on the defensive end as well and not let Central get an easy shot and and go into the locker room with the with the good momentum. I really want to kind of balance the comment we made a few seconds ago about the Eagles and their tenacity, even though they're behind. Right now they're trading by single digits in this ball game. But they are used to coming back. We talked about them coming back against the Bulldogs, trailing by 17. The other side of that ledger is that Pam, you and their loss last ball game against North Carolina A&T. They led by as many as 24 points in that ball game and got clipped at the end by the Aggies. Yes, if I am FAMU and their staff, I don't want to be on that end. I cannot imagine what that bus ride was. No matter how long or how short it was, it could not have been a good one. Jones now set to get us back into live play here after the timeout taken by Coach McCullum and the Raptors. Reeves out front at the post to Randolph. He squares. Clark stutter steps, raises, fires a three, banks it good for the Raptors. He is on fire. That's a contested shot, and he drained it right on time. We'll check that shot, see if he was behind the arc or not. And saying initially it was a two-pointer by Clark, but that'll work either way for the Raptors after the timeout. They got what they wanted. 
So let's see what what they got here. They called it a three on the court. Looks like he was on the line. It's going to be a two-point shot. Either way, right now, FAMU has to get a stop. Looks like they're making some subs right now uh, to get some of their stronger defenders in here and finish it out strong. 29-18, FAMU with the lead. Very impressive first half for them. As you take another look again here. Boy, that's going to be mighty close. <laughs> yeah, it looks like his foot's on the line there for sure. Yeah. Now, I know some people might be confused. We've got three three-point lines out there. So the white line is the high school line. The green line is for the women, and the black is for the men. So we're looking at the black three-point line. And no surprise, our guys in the truck right on top of it with the camera work, catching their foot right on the line. So players back onto the floor now. Coach Moten got that time out, so it will be Palmer to inbound it. Let's see what they've drawn up here at the end of this first half. Caldwell will handle. The defensive assignment belongs to Trajan Davis, the sophomore. We'll see how he guards him. We're down to 10 now, left the first half. Caldwell, right side all the way to the rack, pushes back out front. Good defensive surge by the Rattlers backside. Jones got a hand on it to knock it away. So 28-18 is where we finish this first half of play. Rattlers with the 10-point lead headed to the locker room so they stay in double digits, but things look closer. So at the break, 28-18, FAMU with the lead over the Eagles of North Carolina Central. More basketball ahead on ESPN+. Plus. 28-18, getting set to start the second half of basketball action. Rattlers at the break with a 10-point lead, 28-18, as we take a look at how things got that way in this first 20 minutes of play. Yeah, FAMU has some balanced scoring. They got three players with six-plus points. They're not relying on Randolph to do it all, and that's great that they're sharing the ball. Kaiser pretty quiet for the Eagles of North Carolina Central, just one of four from the floor with just five points. Right, so look at them sharing the ball here at FAMU. They got a couple of good passes and then a wide open shot. And then their effort on the boards, you know, sometimes those stats lie to you. You wouldn't think that uh, the boards are as close as they are because FAMU's really been on it. And then they've been killing it on the baseline. That baseline jumper has been a sweet spot for the Rattlers tonight, especially Jones. Jones has hit that at least three times that I can recall, and he's been draining it. It's automatic for him. Yeah, they've found some good spacing out on the floor. It's been paying dividends for them early in this first 20 minutes. Ten-point spread gets set for the second half of action. Now, I know Central wants to go in with a single-digit uh, deficit, but they still have some good plays in it off, and it's all about the first four minutes when they start out this half. That could be the tell of how they get going, how they get into rhythm, and how they can finish out this game. Really, probably some comments made at halftime, but it really comes down to the Eagles. They've just got to start hitting some shots. Yes, they are known for their spot-up shooting. They're shooting over 50% from the field, and they were 0 for 10 for the half from the three-point line, which is number two in the NCAA. So, like I said once before, you live by the three, you die by the three. We'll see how they fare in the second half of play here. MEAC basketball from the Lawson Center on the campus of Florida A&M University. Glad you could join us for our coverage. See the Rattlers dressed in that black coming out onto the floor to start the final 20 minutes. Yeah, we're going to really look to see what Kaiser does in this second half. They depend on him so heavily on offense. So he's going to have to pick it up. He's going to have to be the leader that he is and really get them going to give them a chance at a victory here tonight. Kobe Ayate, the senior from Accra, Ghana. Looks like he's gonna start this second half for Coach Moten and the Eagles as we get set now for second half action. Justin Wright out on the floor as well. Our correction on this is FAMU, with, this is uh, Randolph with the basketball for FAMU from there to the floor. Randolph starts the second half with a jumper from out front and knocks it down. That is a tough, tough shot. He had Kaiser all in his face and he still knocked it down, hit the bottom of the net on that one. So FAMU takes a 30-18 lead. 
Melvin out front. Whistles. And Mo Motry trying to create some space and commits the foul. Looked like it was a moving screen there. So you just got to get there. You got to get set and let your guard use the screen. You will hate to get that foul. Ayate picking up that foul for the Eagles in his first spot of play. Picks up the early foul in this second 20 minutes. Randolph again trying to find space left side. In traffic had it tapped away and off of his leg. It'll belong to the Eagles. Now let's see if they can convert here. This would be a, a good time. We talked about that earlier in the first half. When you force the team into a mistake, you have to convert on the other end. Full court pressure now as Reeves picks up Melvin across the timeline. Ayate pushes Melvin again. Across the floor, they almost throw that one away. Moultrie regains, though. Shot clock at 10. Out front, Maxwell on the hard push right side. Leans back with the jumper, left it short. Great second effort there. Didn't get the cylinder, so they had to push it up to the cylinder on the second shot, but not in time for the violation. It looked like Kaiser is really forcing his shot there. And again, he's got to let the game come to him. He's forcing it. you got to get the ball moving, maybe get some of your other teammates involved if it's not falling for you. Well, you put so much pressure on him in their comments before the ball game about not worrying about scoring, get involved in other parts of the game. It might have just taken you too literally. I'm sorry. I, I have to apologize for that. You, you made him promise, what, 16 rebounds over the next two days? He, he put that on himself. <laughs> I challenged him to get more than two rebounds. <laughs> Randolph but he, misses on the jumper there. He does have seven today. He does. So he might get past his eight rebounds for today. So when you talk to him before tomorrow's game, just reverse your psychology on it and just talk about all that other stuff, and then he'll start scoring more. Another hat that you wear as a head coach, psychologist. There you go, right? <laughs> On a weave, they jump Moultrie out front. Now he's free behind the arc, got a good look, bangs it home there for the Eagles. Way to knock that down. Now it looks like there was some confusion on defense down there. I hear Coach McCollum over here said they're supposed to be switching. That's how you got that wide open shot. Their first of the contest. Comes with 17 plus left in the ball game. 30-21 FAMU leads, they have the basketball. Looks like there's a little acting job going on down here. It was a little contact, but it's a little extra. Well, they have a good theater program here at FAMU. So. <laughs> Left-handed by Randolph, off the mark. Push. Maxwell, entry pass, nicely done. I have to tell you, left side for the block for the easy lay-in. That was great ball mo movement, great pass, and a magnificent finish. Good job there by the Eagles that trip down the floor. As you look up at the scoreboard, Lee now at seven for FAMU. Those Eagles are ready to lock down on defense. 5-0 run offensively. Single digit lead. Jones. <laughs> Spinner. There, <Good> for him. <laughs> there it is. Jones from Baton Rouge. He is hitting that shot. That's his space on the floor. Knock that one down. Entry pass stolen. Two on one now for the Rattlers. Bounce pass Randolph. They've got to catch up with it. Back out front behind the arc, Reeves to three. Oh, yeah. I was going to make the comment that you got to give that pass up high, but you got a three point shot. Sure. So I'm we'll, not going to say anything about that. We'll just that. mute your mic on that. Right. Right? <laughs> Great basket by the Rattlers there in transition. They got the triple. Kaiser now squared up by Randolph defensively. Rattlers back up to 12 on the lead. Five seconds left here on the shot clock. No foul. Oh, I jinxed them. <laughs> he said you cannot get a foul. There's three seconds left on the shot clock. You do a great job stopping them. Here's that last three there. Bottom of that. Look, he's looking at his teammates. Tell him he's got their back. I'm knocking down threes for y'all tonight. Yeah, that defense so deep. What they had back on the defensive end. Randolph pushing it back out. Reeves taking care of the rest. Hey, Willie, really that was a timely basket because it stopped that 5-0 run by the Eagles. So they stopped some of the bleeding and they get back into double digits on the lead. 
Heiser off of the weave. Let's see if the Rattlers can give that same effort again back to back on defense. They did a great job, but made a mistake with three seconds left. Moultrie pushes right side. The rebound tapped away, but Maxwell clears. And a whistle call inside the paint. Looks like we're going into a break to time out here at the turnover inside the paint. FAMU leads it 35-23. More basketball ahead on ESPN+. Time out, 35-23 lead for the Raptors of FAMU, but the Eagles clawing their way back. That big three there, and then you got big to big playing together right there. A dump down inside and a finish. That's part of that 5-0 run for them to get back into the ball game, but since then, FAMU kind of riding the ship and have pushed the lead back up to double digits. Randolph, left block, tied up there. Easy jumper from the foul line, nicely done with the pass Hooray! over to Moraine, and Moraine finishes for the Rattlers. Moraine's looking like that gave him some energy to play some defense there. He's clapping his hands, ready to get in somebody's shorts. Have to be really impressive about what the Rattlers do after each timeout when they have an offensive possession coming after, after each timeout. They executed well there. They have done it throughout this ball game. They're doing a great job. Those timeouts are so important. Maxwell trying to get it over to Kaiser, but tossed it out of bounds. Those unforced turnovers, those will catch up with you, especially when you're trying to get back into a ball game. So FAMU will have it after the backcourt turnover by the Eagles. Palmer set to come in next dead ball for Coach Moten and the Eagles as FAMU works at their side of the floor. On the weave, Clark looking for space. Moultrie draws close on defense. Shot clock now to 12. Here's Randolph. Doubled, lost the basketball. Loose in the corner. Eagles come away with it. Melvin in the corner. Moultrie for three. Back of the iron, missed on the shot. Rebound fought for. Loose on the floor, back out. Moultrie again for three. Same result, off the mark. That was a great effort to get another shot off, but maybe not the shot you want. Maybe get another ball, but you got a second opportunity. Turn your offense and get a better look. Randolph got an opportunity at the corner, able to turn it, got the lay-in for the Rattlers. And the Rattler bench is going wild over here. That was big time. They are into it. 39-23 after the lay-in by Randolph right side. He just challenged and he won. Kaiser. On the turn to Maxwell, they push it back out front. Jumper by Melvin outside. Air ball by him, basketball over to the Raptors. They are just struggling from behind the arc today. It is dry as the Sahara Desert right now <laughs> for the three-point shot. They cannot get anything to fall. Now that's a great drive here from Randolph. I told you he's a downhill player. He likes to get to the rim. Like I said, I would love to see him get some more and one plays, but he finished strong there. Reeves. Eagles into that zone defense now. Whistles at the block. Evan Bashir back out on the floor for the Rattlers at the block. Basketball will stay with FAMU. Definitely have a size advantage inside. You know, he didn't have the best um, post-up position, but he's a big man to get around. He's still able to get a touch and get another possession. And then that size advantage <laughs> did, not, <laughs> did not go in their favor. He got a little too aggressive, cleared him out. So get him for the foul, and we go back the other way with the Eagles handling the basketball. Alex Caldwell out on the floor now for the Eagles. He has provided a spark for them. He was not happy at all with that call, but you gotta understand when bodies start flying. Somebody's gonna be the blame, right? <laughs> you know there's probably gonna be a foul call. <laughs> Moultrie over the Palmer, back to Caldwell for three. Good look, Spinner won't stay, but a whistle. An offensive push down low by the Eagles. Yeah, that would have been amazing. That ball ramp in and out. You can just tell that was a contested shot. Rimmed in and out. You can just tell it's just not their night tonight. Palmer commits the foul. Randolph back out on the floor for the Rattlers. And at some point, Coach, you got to start thinking about, okay, if we're not doing what we need to do from the perimeter, do we start looking to the inside for baskets? 
Absolutely. You got to you got to make some type of adjustment. You know, you can't just shoot yourself completely out of the game. So maybe pound the ball inside, get some easy buckets, and then when they start collapsing, try to go back out, inside out again. Tupper Clark from outside. He's on range for FAMU. Their perimeter jo uh, shots are working for them. Absolutely. I mean, FAMU is hitting everything. Contested shots, wide open shots. The basket is huge for them right now. We talked about this prior to coming on on air that the Eagles were a little bit undersized as it relates to the matchup. But sometimes you still got to go in there and try it if things aren't working from the outside. If nothing else, get them in foul trouble. Make them defend you. Attack, attack, attack. Get something on the rim. Come free throws. Now here's this last three here. Ball movement. See a uh, decoy with Randolph coming on the baseline and they go back. And they, and they knocked it down. But to your point about changing things up this last trip down the floor, you see at the line, Palmer, they went inside. Palmer drew a foul, and he's shooting. That's right. I think they heard you over there. <laughs> the Shear takes a seat, and Johnny Brown on the floor. And as Palmer hits the first of two. So, got them both. That's right. You never know what it's going to take to get them rolling again. That might be exactly what the Eagles need to get their momentum going. Randolph out front now for FAMU. Desheer guarding him. That's our key matchup in the ball game. We highlighted both of them in the pregame. FAMU now. Brown runs it to the corner. Got the jumper free, but he missed. Caldwell chases down for the Eagles. Pushes to Kaiser. The Euro step. And a travel. 11.56 left, Rattlers with a 42-25 lead over the Eagles. More basketball ahead on ESPN+. Pain at the source, while acetaminophen blocks pain signals. The future of pain relief is here. New Advil Dual Action. 42-35, Rattlers leading it, and they're leading it, Coach, even with a couple of the stars in the ballgame missing tonight. Yeah, the biggest difference is that Randolph's teammates have stepped up. You've got Clark and Jones both having really good games, but no one has yet to really step up and help Kaiser on the Eagles team. Bam, you getting a lot of help from D.J. Jones, Bryce Moraine, and coming off that bench, they're also getting some good play from Spear. Jones again with a hand in his face. He from deep downtown. He was all the way in Detroit shooting that three. Got the space, knocked it down. 11.28 left in this ball game. Cam Yu, boy, just that quickly pushed it up to a 20 point lead. Palmer may have traveled, but no whistle on that. Kick ball inside the paint. It'll stay with the Eagles. Look at this here. We just got done talking about how other people stepped up. He was deep, deep. Look at this angle here. Back here, he looked like he was almost to the volleyball line with the hand in his face. That is a great shot. That's Jai Clark, the junior for Orlando, getting that three-pointer for the Rattlers from way downtown. Kaiser slides through, leaves the right-handed floater. Good for the Eagles. Momentum carrying him left, but body control with the floater. Right hand knocked it down. Now let's see if this was gets, gets them going. It, it's not too late. There's still time on the clock. The game is not over, so there's no more time. There's a lot of basketball to be played. Spear up top, Randolph on the weave again. It's Clark. He's free. Got the ace, rattle it, and it's off though. Rebound, Kaiser pushes up the floor. Moultrie all the way through, lost it inside. Rattlers with numbers now. As Spear stumbles. Randolph comes away. That was a great hustle play. I love to see people get it on the floor and, and, and try to make something happen. Whistles on the inside. Caldwell trying to stay put. And he lured Randolph into the foul inside the paint. Yeah, charges. Those are those things. This is when... Everybody on the bench gets up. Everybody's excited. You create energy. You're on the road. You know, that charge right there could really be a catalyst. Maxwell back out on the floor now for Coach Moten and the Eagles. Approaching the 10-minute mark left in this basketball game. On the 
believe it's Caldwell. Up top, Palmer down in the corner. Free with the jumper. Moultrie found the range for the triple. Now that's the Eagles that I've been watching. You know, they got into their offense, they got the ball moving, and then in result, they got an open three and knocked it down. Lead down to 15 now for FAMU. Had it up to 20. In the corner, Jones trying to answer. Can't for the air bear to put back on the back side. But that one won't fall. But back to FAMU again. This time, Clark. Triple this time off the mark. Whistles in the backcourt. Unintended tie up there. As Brown over the back of Caldwell. And he seems to have taken the brunt of that. Contact. Yeah, it's good to see him get up. You, you hate to see players get hurt on hustle plays like that. You know, they're giving their all, and I, that's that's part of it. But glad to see him get up and jog off. Brown at 6'9", had a long way to go to the floor because he was over the back. But Caldwell in the backcourt came down on the back of his head. 9.25 remaining. Rattler's got to be thinking about foul trouble. Now, got a couple of players now already with three. Or two of them, that's Spear and Randolph with three each. Right, you got to be really smart here and make sure that you still have fouls to give. We'll talk about being smart. That's Moultrie going underneath for the lay in there for the Eagles. And that probably plays into what you just said, knowing that they're in foul trouble. This is a good opportunity for the Eagles to attack. But Jones answers right back at the baseline, coach, with a nice reverse lay in. You got to play both ends. You got to get back on E. That was pretty, but you just gave up two on the other end. You got to get back. Called right on the wing. Moultrie trying to find the space to go across the floor to Kaiser. Hard push by him. Leans back with the jumper. Can't get it to fall. Yeah, that's a tough shot. He was off balance, you know. It's not like he was in a rhythm. That was not a good shot. Randolph pushes over the side of the floor. Nicely done on a tight pass to Brown, who got the lay in. Randolph drew them all to him, and he got the pass to Brown. He's a heck of a decoy now. 8.23 remains. That'll force us a timeout there. 49-32. Rattlers extend their lead to North Carolina Central. More basketball just ahead on ESPN+. Plus. Fight back fast with new Tums Naturals. Free from artificial flavors and dyes. 8.23 remains. FAMU with a 49-32 lead over the Eagles in North Carolina Central. FAMU answering every run by the Eagles thus far in this ball game. But FAMU, talk about DJ, MJ Randolph in the pregame. Not getting it done as it relates to scoring, but contributing in other ways. Well, as we said before, MJ does it all for them. So his shot's not falling, but he still finds a way to contribute. He's got eight assists. That is how you get your other teammates involved, and you still contribute in a positive way to your team. We talked to him in the pregame, and that's what he was saying. We just got to be patient. We got to let the ball game come to us. And he's doing that in terms of distributing that basketball to other players. Coach McCollum over here wanted his players to take a charge and sacrifice that body and keep on expand, expanding on this lead. It'll be Palmer, the senior, at the line for the Eagles shooting. Randolph set to come back out onto the floor next. That ball. Palmer short of the first on the free throw. We're getting here at the end, and you know, we've talked about the theme is COVID and rhythm. Now you're going to see some fatigue, you know. He missed that free throw simply because he didn't use his legs. It's end of the game, or somewhat close to the, end of the game. Same on the second there. No knee yeah. bend on that at all, just hoisting with his arms. Randolph across the timeline now. Trying to square it down low if they can. They're going to go left side over to Jones. Jones. Right block, whistles as Reeves would be guilty of the offensive foul there as he tried to go down underneath. 7.37 remains, Rattlers with the 49-32 lead. More basketball still ahead from the Lawson Center on ESPN+. Plus. <laughs> WandaVision, now streaming on Disney+. Plus. An upgrade to the Disney bundle for even more. 
Rattlers with a 49-32 lead, and part of the reason is the unselfish play of M.J. Randolph. Randolph has been dropping dimes. He's almost dropped enough dimes to make a dollar at this point, and he's getting everybody involved. He's not being selfish in any way, and that is sign of a great player. So, Bam Yu with the lead. Eagles with the basketball. Mountain getting harder for them to climb. Each passing minute. Caldwell pushes back out front. Yate with the jumper, rims it good for the Eagles. We've talked about this with COVID and not knowing if a game could be your last game. It even goes down to each possession is very important at this point, too. Try to dump it down low to Jones. Whistles down at the block. So at 7.01 left, coach, you're down 15. What's the strategy to pull yourself back into play on this? I like to see a little press, get, create some turnovers, get FAMU out of the rhythm. We've been talking about rhythm the whole time. This is much as important to get in. You got to get them out of their rhythm, speed them up, not let them play so comfortably. Rattlers to inbound the basketball. They do to Spears. Spears got some space. Foul on extended and knocks it down for FAMU. 15 feet has been really sweet for FAMU. Everybody on that team contributing offensively and defensively for the Rattlers right now. Caldwell looks for something left side. This is Kaiser on the weave. Outside, Kaiser finally finds the range for the Eagles. Yeah, he knocked it down. Now we got to get a stop. We, as in Central, <laughs> has to get a stop right here. We're down to 624 left. Bam. Behind the arc. Looks like FAMU's trying to run some time off the clock. They're being very patient, getting a lot of passes, and really taking their shots deep into the shot clock. Randolph missed that one, but they did run some time off. Whistles back the other way, offensive foul. Randolph and Moultrie just running over the defense of Cameron Reeves inside the paint. It's really hard. He's there. He said he sold it. <laughs> it's a good charge right there outside of the restricted area and everything. So Moultrie trying to plow its way through, picks up the foul. You can definitely sense the frustration from the Eagles. You know, they're not really getting anything to go their way. They hit a shot and then they come down and they have a turnover with that charge. So they're getting a little frustrated. They just got to find a way to push through these last six minutes. Perkins back out on the floor for the Eagles. I haven't seen him in quite a while. Perkins, second all time at North Carolina Central in terms of assists, coming into today's ball game with a 510. Only trails Emmanuel Chapman, who finished his career in 2014 with a total of 617. So they 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 were listening to Coach Pillow. They got into that press, um, but it looked like maybe you broke it pretty easily. So now they had to really apply, apply the pressure in the half court. Reeves over to Randolph. Shot clock at 10. They tried the entry pass. It's tapped away. Eagles come away with the steal. Kaiser on a one on three. He'll still attack underneath and he draws a foul. There you go. That's what the press is supposed to do. They might not have gotten a turnover in the press. But they still created a turnover. And now Kaiser has the opportunity to put some points on the board to convert. The press, if you at least force them to take some time getting the ball across the mid stripe, and then you they have to kind of hurry to get back into the offensive set, knowing that the time is short. Work to the advantage of the Eagles that trip. And Kaiser trying to convert on some free throws, but missed on the first. Legs, legs are so important. When your shot is not falling, it's not the upper body. It's your lower body. That's when it gets you back into it. That's what Coach Moten said to us prior to the ball game. He said, if we had to assess really where we are, I'd say we're in preseason form. And one indicator of that is just the fatigue always rises. Just not really in shape yet. Under 530 left in the ball game. It almost feels like an NIT feeling because you don't know when you're going to play. <laughs> You don't know where you're going to play, and it's the last minute. So you're always on your toes. It's always uncertain. Down in the corner, Reeves fires. Had to because of the shot clock. Missed on the shot. Perkins pushes left side. Maxwell reversely and nicely done. 
great give and go there. That's I love when they reward the big man on a pass and a break like that, and he gets the back and gets the finish to get the two points. They whistled on that basket down low. We'll see, but the basket will count for the Eagles. Notch another assist there for Perkins. And Maxwell finishes with that basket. We're at the five minute mark. And we're showing full court pressure. Like Coach McCullum trying to get a couple of players in before. I think they're going to allow him to do that. Trying to get some guards out on the floor. Clark coming out there. Trying to get an indication here from the officials that they had a flop warning. Yeah, yeah. There's no call. They just gave a warning to Cameron Reeves of the Rattlers for a flop warning there. And uh, so no foul call. Just issued that warning as we're set to resume action. The sheer back out on the floor for the Rattlers of FAMU. Official Steven Anderson coming to the sideline. Said he was going to do that in the pregame. That if there was something out there that he wasn't, thought we would not be sure about, he'd come clear it up for us. Man of his word, he did so. Absolutely. Half court offense for FAMU now trying to run that clock dry. Reeves tied up and they turn it over. And it'll stay with the Rattlers. Almost again, he didn't get down the press, but you take time off the clock, which makes him have to rush in the half court. And there's only six seconds left on the shot clock. So, it, so the Eagles need to just really buckle down and still have a chance to get a turnover. So across the floor now. It'll be six seconds to shoot here for FAMU. With Moraine to inbound it. So Randolph's going to have to work quickly here. Got three, floats right side, head fake to the rack. Can't get it off. Did get it off, though, but didn't hit the cylinder. Right. That's a, that's a great change of speed and change of direction right there by Randolph, but this couldn't, couldn't knock it down. Couldn't draw iron. Let's take a look at what was transpiring with the call against Reed. First team warning for a player that tries to delay play with and the second will be a technical foul, but that's what it's about is if you're out there flopping, trying to create something, and the officials catch it, then they're going to give you the warning, and the next time it'll be a technical. So that's why they stopped play, but the basket still counted. And this one's tapped in the corner. I'm going to be real honest with you. That is a little different than what we have on the women's side. So that, that rule I'm not very familiar with, but I'm going to do my research so I'm ready for the next time that comes about. Hey, producer Chad Lampman right on top of it, pulling that rule right out for us. Appreciate that from the truck, no question. Half court set for the Eagles of North Carolina Central. 51-39. I believe they have trailed this entire ball game to the Rattlers. I believe you're right. Gatte with another triple for him. That one's off the mark, but back Maxwell with the backside of the rebound. Look at him work the paint slots left side for the lay-in. That's great power. Three. 3.45 remaining after Maxwell's nice work in the work. Rattler still lead it, 51-41 over the Eagles. More after this break. So you can emerge your best with emergency. 3.45 remains. FAMU with a 51-41 lead, Coach, but things are getting tight. Yeah, this game is still very manageable. It's only a 10-point deficit, and there's four minutes roughly, a little less than four minutes to play. I would expect that Eagles will come out in the press again, try to create a turnover, and then there you are in single digits, and it's even more reasonable to be able to get back into this game. That's three minutes, 12 seconds. Rattlers have been scoreless. Meanwhile, the Eagles on a 9-2 run, and that'll get you back into any ball game. It's trailed by 20 a few minutes ago. That's also a sign of them having a veteran team. You know, they stuck with it. Things have not been going their way, and here they are with 3.45 left, but a chance to still win a ball game. They should jump into immediate full court pressure. This is going to be real pressure here, Coach. Nothing token about this. That's right. They got a safety back there. Randolph in the backcourt for the Rattlers. Kaiser guarding him back there. Yate going to try to double. Pat it in the backcourt over to Reeves. They got to hurry. That's a 10-second yeah. violation. It's exactly what Coach Moten dialed up, and the players responded. It doesn't matter in what form that turnover comes in, but it's so much sweeter. When they can't even, if they can't get past your press, into the half court, that's like a real victory. That really gets you going. Indeed. Limited time off the clock, and you have the basketball and a half court set. The most important part 
about pressing is once you create that turnover, you have to convert. There they go down low to Moulton. And he was there, can't do it. You got to make that layup. You worked so hard. You create a turnover. 10 second violation and you blow the layup. You got to knock that down. We go to 309 left in the ball game. A spread four floor for Randolph and the Rattlers. Now Moultrie jumps him near mid strike. Works so. it to Spear. So right now time is not on the Eagles side. It was so important for them to convert on that and now they're under three. At the baseline, blocking foul there against the Eagles. Non-shooting foul. But fam, you will have it. 20 on the shot clock. And we're at 2.53 remaining. Jones handles. Famu is not in a rush to score. Rain. And it stripped backside and off of his leg. Turnover gives it to North Carolina Central. You don't force a layup in that situation. He still has 16 seconds left on the shot clock. You can attack all you want, but kick it. You still have plenty of time to get a better shot than that. Surveying, looking down to our right and taking a look at Coach McCullum. He was just in as much disbelief as you were that, that they forced that shot on the inside. <laughs> Moultrie now, half court set for the Eagles. They cut this to a single digit ball game. They dump it down low to Maxwell in traffic. Hard work by him, left side again, Maxwell converts. Maxwell won the flex on him after that. That was a power move, he's been so strong in the paint. Early on they weren't getting him a lot of touches and now he's really been an asset for them. 51-43 now. Randolph doubled, Spear. Over to Moraine. Nine to shoot for the Rattlers. Randolph all the way through. Did he step on the inbound line? Went down at the baseline. and looked like he drew a foul at the block. This is becoming a trend. This is the second time that he's gotten bailed out on the baseline like that. Reeves back out on the floor now for Coach McCullough. And Bowles sprints out for the Eagles. So at two minutes left, shot clock back to 20. Reeves surveys the inside to Randolph. Randolph, head fake. That's what we were looking for on that previous possession. Randolph did not force it. Shot fake didn't work. He got it back out. And now it's three-point play. Moultrie commits the foul on Clark, trying a three-point shot for FAMU. Foul number zero, Three shots. Foul so here we are here, late in the shot clock once again. That is a dagger. That is not a mistake you're going to make at any time, but especially now, less than two minutes to go, and you were in a position to maybe make a run and have a ball game here. Yeah, it comes on the heels of two instances at the block where they bailed them out and gave FAMU another shot at it. Now they have an opportunity to have three points um, and then no time off the clock. So they're really going to have to convert down here and make some happen. So Clark's free throws pushes it back to a 10-point lead. So Perkins quickly back the other way, all the way left-handed. Got the lead. That's what you got to do. You got to score quick, try to create another turnover, get some points up on that board fast and in a hurry. Rappers across the timeline. Randolph handles. We're at a minute 30 remaining. They got to keep applying pressure here. You can't let them stand there and let the time just run off the clock. Randolph in traffic now. Pushes back out. Reeves at six to shoot. Looks like they might have missed some steps there. Randolph floater, nicely done by Randolph. Worked the clock right down to the end, and he got the basket for FAMU. Absolutely. He showed up right on time. He's not been scoring a lot, but he's scoring when it matters most for sure. 55-45 lead back to 10 under a minute remaining now. Kaiser. That's one on one, he'll go to the rack, misses on the cylinder, but Randolph trying to catch up with that play, commits the foul. 
That's that MJCJ matchup that we've been talking about all night. That's the fourth on Randolph. He's picked up guarding Kaiser in this basketball game. So FAMU now close to being able to say that now in the Lawson Center since last year, they've won 10 in a row. That's right. That's right. That's, um, that's what I talk about. De defending your home court is so important, and the Rattlers have done that. Kaiser with the shooter's roll. Here's Randolph here driving downhill. That's what he likes to do, keeping his dribble alive, change the direction, and then a nice soft touch to finish it. That's his shot, that little floater inside the paint. That is his shot. He has mastered that for sure. Kaiser, one of two from the line. The rebound to the Rattlers. Yeah, they got to get it. They got, they got a foul. They got some, well, Kaiser look at that. Instead. Oh. They can't convert on the play in though, and the basketball back to FAMU. They still got time to get another yeah. stop here. They jumped him to just get knock at the basket. They Randolph. definitely got him brushed up. Alley hoop, nicely done. Yeah. Who else but DJ Jones on the receiving end of that assist from Randolph? Randolph in double digits and assist in this ball game. Kaiser, left side with the underneath right-handed lay-in, and he converts. Yeah, a little late for him to get going, but who knows? This might carry on into tomorrow, you know? So what? Had a, a, a challenging game? You, got, you get to come back tomorrow and go right back at it. At the line, it'll be Cameron Reeves, who's shown up well here for Coach McCullum and the Rattlers in this ball game. Reeves, the senior from Champaign, Illinois. Steady play by him, and really a lot of these Rattlers that got into this ball game, each contributing in their own way to a good performance. Definitely was a team win tonight. There are so many people who contributed and really got them that gel. You know, we talked about them not having that many games and not being able to gel. This looks like a team that's been playing together several games like, it is, like they should be in February. Reeves good on the first. And knocks down the second as well. So with six seconds left, looks like Coach Moten's going to take a timeout. His team trailing by 10. I'm not seeing a lot of 10 point plays in my, <laughs> yeah. <in> my day. <laughs> with six seconds left. Right. As we look at what's left for the Rattlers on their regular season schedule. Meet A and T, a team they lost to prior to this contest with Central, then back to South Carolina State. They beat them one time here in the Lawson Arena, and then the second ball game pushed because of COVID. And then they'll get Central again on Thursday. That's to make up for the doubleheader that was supposed to be here early right. on in the year. And then they'll finish up with Central on another back to back. So the road for FAMU, if they're going to get good seating in the tournament, it's going to push them through this team three more times. Another four when you include tomorrow. Absolutely. <laughs> but for today, the tally is going to go for the Rattlers of FAMU over the Eagles. 59-48, they win it over the Central Eagles of North Carolina Central. As you talk about tomorrow's ball game, Coach, let's talk about what you saw here tonight going into tomorrow. I think tomorrow is going to be a totally different ball game, especially if the Eagles are hitting shots. They were, they did not get into their bread and butter. They didn't turn their offense like they normally do. So I bet when the coaches watch film tonight for Central, they're going to really emphasize on them, making sure they run the offense and get the shots they're accustomed to getting. They win it by 10. The Rattlers of FAMU do it. They win it over the Eagles of North Carolina Central. 59-50 Rattlers, the winners tonight. We're back here tomorrow night at the Lawson Center for more MEAC basketball. These same teams, the Rattlers and the Eagles, will square up then. Until then, on behalf of my broadcast partner, Siobhan Pillow, and everybody here at ESPN, thanks for watching. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night.